Hello, my fellow car modelers, and how are you doing today? I am sure that you all have noticed that there was a particular series that I had been working on over the past couple of years, an adventure in building a model car, where we were building the Monogram 66 Malibu flip nose. If you are watching this, obviously I have returned the series, and each episode is now going to have this little foreword in it explaining why it was gone and why I'm doing the series and I'm going to bring it back. The reason why is that I don't think many of you understood why I was doing that series and what the purpose of this channel is. When I started this channel, I did not want to be like all the others, not saying that they're bad. I wanted to do something different. I was not going to be a build channel. I will do builds, but I'm not going to be a build channel. I wanted to be a model car hobby information channel and tip channel. So the whole idea, as was stated in the very first episode of an adventure of building a model car, was the reason behind the series was to just have a kit that I would work on through time to use as doing tips. So if you look at the episodes, they're not so much about building that particular model. It's about showing you tips in building a model car, my way of building a model car. It will not be something that I work on all the time. I will do other episodes on other subjects and I will build other models. I am not continually working on this 66 Malibu. This brought some criticism and misunderstandings where I would literally have people so enraged that I wasn't constantly working on it and wanting the rest of this series to continue on that they would threaten to write the channel off and unsubscribe. Well, I'm going to tell you this, that's not a threat that's going to shake me up. If you want to unsubscribe, by all means do. I'm going to continue on. That is why I pulled the series. I'm bringing it back for all of you. It is going to continue on and I will work on episodes as I see fit. Could take a couple of years before it's all done. And when it's all done, you're going to have a nice whole play set to watch from beginning to end. But if you're following it and anticipating the next episode and you're trying to build the same car along with me, I, I'm sorry. That's not what its intentions were. I'm not going to do it all the time. I want to do it in my time as I see fit. I have other things I want to do. Please respect that. It's not about the build of this particular car. It is about the tips and information that I'm giving you. That was my intention. Now you know. Let's continue on and let's enjoy an adventure in building and model car. Hope you enjoy it. Hey, hello my fellow car modelers. How are you doing today? Welcome back to the third episode of The Adventures in Building a Model Car. Um, okay, we did that one already. Anyways, so for this episode, we're working on this Chevelle, right? We all know that. But remember how we got that flip nose and we had that kind of janky, old school looking, kind of whatever makes it work type front frame? structure in there and we cut the panels out and we want to put more tubing in there and make it look a little more acceptable. I think it's going to look a lot better. So this is what we're going to do in this episode and start getting that front end area and everything that's going to be under that flip nose to look right. So I'm ready to get back into building, man. I'm having a good time with this car. This model is just turning out to be a whole lot of fun. I'm really having a good time with it and I think we're going to get a really good look with it. But we're still up in the air how we want to make this thing finished. Are we going to have it be really shiny and nice looking? Is it going to be a drag car? I want it to be a street legal car, but how about that old used look and just kind of that that beater on the side of the house look or something like that. I don't know, but uh, we're getting close to making that decision here and I really want to hear from you guys what you want to see. So far it's leaning towards making it weathered and a little beat up and kind of used. I'm really leaning towards that used look. Still not out of the idea of making it a really nice flashy shiny paint job. But one thing I am definitely going to do is I'm going to put a vinyl top on this car. So I'm going to get to show you how I do that and that's going to be something really neat in an upcoming episode. But until then we're getting back into the front end of this thing. So I'm going to get back to building this thing. Thank you. 
So something that I discovered here, when I went ahead and cut the panels out, before I cut the other one, I got to thinking, well, there was a reason for them, was the panel is what stopped this from going into the firewall too far and then messing up your wheelbase. So before I cut the other one off, I took, I don't know if you can see this, so on the top bar here, before I cut the other one off, I measured exactly how much of this upper tubing goes into the firewall, and I put a little notch in it, and then I matched up the one that I already cut out. Can you see my notch? That notch will be on the inside of the firewall, so when the model is all completed, you won't see that. But now I have a reference mark, and that way I can get this in in the proper amount, and it won't mess my wheelbase off. And, uh, you know... We can move along, the car won't look all silly, and the front tires all tucked up too far fo forward or backwards. So, with that said, let's move on. So now that I got the firewall and the front frame assembly all cleaned up where I want it so far, uh, I'm going to get back to that. But in order to build this structurally, I'm going to need at least the front engine plate for the big block Chevy and the front engine plate is a major part of the structure of the front framing but it also has the water pump and timing cover that's how this is mounted to the engine and you can see that there needs to be a bit of cleanup done to get rid of some injection pins I'm going to figure out what my color is going to be for the front framing and the firewall and this plate but I first got to get it all cleaned up so I figured we would work on that and I want to get the two engine block halves together in the heads. And of course, those will be going Chevy engine orange, keeping it traditional. And I want to also do body work and fix up that oil pan because it's split in half. So we're going to work on that. So as far as the rest of the front frame assembly, what I'm wanting to do is I decided I'm going to keep this plate because it's needed for a lot of the structure and for the flip nose and the hinging but I want to add some tubing that goes around here just to make this look a little more complete. So we're going to get working on that first. So I've gone through my plastic scratch building remnant stock and I found some tubing and more than likely it's evergreen that is pretty close to the size of the tubing in the kit. It's a good match and what I'm going to do is, because I wanted to use the hollow tubing, I'm going to figure out the length that I want to go. What I want to do is get the right size and figure out how I'm going to make it look curved down. And I want to put a slice in it so that it'll fit right down into this plate right here and fit down onto that and look like a part of the structure. And if we have to do some filling and everything to make it look like one continuous bar going down, that's the challenge we got right now. So. I'm going to take a whack at it here. Let's see what we can do. Got this one with a slight bend to it. I wonder if I wonder if that'll work better for me. That could be something good. That's going to be really good right there. I know exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to retain this slight bend. If you can see it here. Follow the straight line here of the main portion of the bar and try to trim this off right there. Get that filed down to be nice and flush and follow the same straight line as that tubing. Now what I've created here is I've got my round bend that I want to make it flow into this top bar and then we'll do the proper filling and everything to get it to look like one continuous bar. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to do is I'll bring another piece up here and I'll fit them kind of like a 45 degree angle and then I'm going to have another piece of tubing come across here to complete the lower run of the frame. We're just going to cut it off right there. And lots of times with this tubing what I, what I end up doing to get a nice cut I like to do is put my X-Acto blade on my spot that I want cut and I roll it and I just cut it. Just put a little pressure on it and roll it roll it, roll it, and then there we go. Get a nice straight cut. Works out real good. 
again, my idea is I want to slice this down this, this area right here. This is going to be challenging without cutting a finger off. And then the goal is to get it to fit right on to that plate. I will hold it with a tool so I don't cut my finger off. I can try to hold this in place. Set my X-Acto knife. I'll just take the X-Acto knife, lay it across, press down to where I can feel it kind of going into the plastic, and then I just slide down like that to kind of make a straight line. Let the let the X-Acto knife be your straight edge. And I got once you get a line in there, you can kind of get in there and follow that. Once I get a line going and scribed, what are we going to do? The Tamiya Plastic Scriber 2. My favorite tool. There we go. Got myself a nice straight line going down there. I just keep pulling that across. I should get that all the way through. And it should give me the proper thickness. It should slide right on there. Alright, so we've broke through and we are got ourselves a nice groove, if you can see that. If you can see that, we've created a nice groove. And let's see if my theory will work. It should kind of like slide right on there. I might have to open it up a little bit more. But it, I think it's going in the right direction. See what I'm doing here? Just using the sandpaper folded and I'm just going down that groove, getting it a little more wider so it fits. See how that's sticking onto the sandpaper? That's basically what I'm going to want to do on this on this piece right here. Let's see if we can get this to work. Fitting right on there. I think my theory worked. Actually, what I'm going to have to do is I'm actually going to have to notch this area a little more inward. I'll just do it and you'll see what I'm, I'm talking about. I'm going to notch this portion of the tubing to fit up against that upper run. I created this little notched area to fit the upper run into there. This all should work a lot better. And it works. That's pretty much how it'll fit on there. And once I get some sanding and probably glue will be enough of the filler, probably won't have to use any body filler, that'll get that to be like an extended one full piece tubular run. Figure something out down in this section. I'm probably going to do a continuous run from the bottom across here and up. But putting the slot on there just helps it fit onto that plate and you just follow that plate. And there you go, some scratch building skills developed. Have I ever done that before? No, I have never done that before. But, you know, I've done enough scratch building to know kind of something. So I think, like I said, we'll find out if I'm really a good model builder by the time this series is done. Finding out the truth. Finding out the truth about Lucas C, that's what it's all about. Okay, so I've done some work on the slot here. Got it fitted really well, and I'm just going to slide it up onto the here. And that's pretty much the look we got. We'll do some, maybe a little putty work, or probably just the glue will fill it in. And we'll get that all sanded to where it looks like one continuous bar down. And I just think that's going to be a better look. So let's get it glued on. So I'm just going to dab a little glue on here. Held on. Huh. This glue is kind of weird. It's very watery, and this is the first time using this Tamiya glue. It's very liquidy or watery, and it's not quite setting. I thought it would be an instant bond, like super glue. I've used it before, I think. Eh. I just can't get this on. What the heck? Dab, dab a little more here. Holding, holding, holding. Dab a little more here. There we go. It's just not sticking. I'll just dab a little more. This is weird. 
and it is not sticking. Huh, I have no idea. So, I figured out what my problem is with my gluing technique. So I didn't know, I don't know if you noticed the color of the cap I was using when I was gluing it on. And I discovered something about Tamiya products. Tamiya Extra Thin Cement, I believe is pretty good stuff. Tamiya Mark Fit doesn't work so good in gluing parts together on account of its setting solution for decals. So I believe it was an applicator failure. And I don't mean the applicator in the bottle, I believe this applicator here. Yeah, so my advice to you out there is when you want to glue parts together, use plastic cement, not decal solution. Decal solution does not work. I have proven it. You saw it here. So if anybody out there says that I'm not giving good advice, you just refer to this. I never claim to be the sharpest tool in the shed. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get this glued on and then, then I'll show you. So we've got that, and what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to try to shape this all, and there'll probably be a line that I'm going to have to fill. Whether I use putty, it's awful small area of putty. This is where CA glue would really come in good. I might put a little bit of CA glue in there just to fill the cracks and, and get it all smoothed out, and it should look really good. So I'm going to take just my sanding pad that's 800, and I think that's heavy enough to just... Do my, not circular motion, but my round motion around a tube and get that sanded into shape. I got both the bars on there. I'm going to start kind of filling and sanding. And that's where this CA glue is going to come in handy. I'm going to be using the CA glue to fill in the gaps and sand out stuff. And again, trying to get this bar to look like one continuous bar going down. And I think that's going to add to a much better looking engine bay. I think we're getting a look. It's all blending in. Again, a little bit of CA glue to fill in this gap and sand that down. I think we're going to have a good look there. Well, all right, boys and girls, this is what we've got so far. I've been working on it, and uh, I just didn't want to bore you with all my fabrication and fitting and sanding and everything. But that's pretty much what you got to do to do something like this. A whole lot of fitting and cutting, and it, it took, took a while, but I think the results are really good. As you can see, we've got... A completed tube front part of the chassis so what I did was I did it in sections as you can probably see but the plan is is when I paint this it's gonna look like all one continuous tube there one this way and they meet right there and this whole piece here that's the hinge I kind of molded it all together using a lot of CA glue just dabbing CA glue dripping the accelerant on there to make it hard and fast so I could sand and just a lot of sanding and fitting and what I hope to do is, is shoot primer on it and really get a good look on it at that point. It looks pretty good right now. I try to run my thumbnail over the joints that I've worked and to see if I can feel it, feel my thumbnail catch it and and everything seems real smooth and all filled in. But when you get the primer down on here, that's when you'll really see if you need any spots. And at that point in time, what I see, if I feel I need to do it with a little bit of putty or a little more CA glue, I'll come to, when I get to that point, I'll make that decision. I think I'm going to have the look that I want. This is going to be a lot better than the way it looks out of the kit, I think. Well, that's about it for this episode of Auto Car Hobby Headquarters. Sure am enjoying this build. I hope you learned something today. And again, I want to hear from you guys. What do you want it to be? A shiny one? All pretty? Or do you want it beat to heck? Let me know. I want to, I want your comments down here. And also, don't forget, I want to see your models. No one's sending me pictures of your models. I'm going to put them on these videos. Send me your models. Give a little description about them. Give your name and where you're from. And I want to put you on the videos. Right here is my Facebook page. 
go ahead and put your models on that and we'll get them up on the videos. So keep on giving me your comments, put them down below. I love hearing from you guys. You're really fueling me. You're giving me ideas. And remember my other shows now that I got. I got Lucas Kits where I pull a kit out of my collection here and I show it to you and you get to see some kits maybe you never knew about and you can go out and look for them or just been always curious. And I kind of like to give a little history and what little knowledge I know about the kit. Uh, sometimes I think I know what I'm talking about. I'm pretty sure I do. And then I, of course, do my weekly vlog where I blow my stack on whatever the heck is getting under my skin or I just want to talk about the, the hobby. And There's always something I want to talk about the hobby. I love talking about that hobby. Again, that all centers around this hobby and it all centers around having fun and positivity. Even though I might talk about some negative stuff in those vlogs, it's about getting the hobby positive. And that's the message I'm putting out there and I just want everybody to have fun with it. If you like what I'm doing here, punch that like button and subscribe. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks a bunch. So. Yeah, I want to see your model. So right here, uh, yeah. So, right here, I'm going to put the address to my Facebook group. No, it's not a group, you stupid. So, wham, right there, that's my face group. <sighs> right there, that's my face group, face, face group book. <sighs> Do it in again, do it again. Here we go. So, work on is the... What are we going to work on? Mm. Ah, getting old, having brain fade. Ah, getting old, having brain fade. What the heck are we working on?